Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. I'm Mary Corrado, an interior decorator here in Portland. And today I'm going to show you one of my color crushes. It is called Frankly Scarlet. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I do not really paint a lot of red furniture, but this is one of those colors that you can do so much with to change it, because straight out of the container, let me show you. It's a little bit bright. I mean, it's a great color. If you love red, this is a great color. But let me show you too how it can also be the base to so many finishes. What I did here on this board was obviously I taped it out. So this is the original unwaxed. And then I added ceruzing wax. Let me show you. I have it somewhere. Hmm. I'll find it. Oh, here. I use ceruzing wax on this. What you do is you just put a little bit of the wax on, use a chip brush, and just brush. And keep brushing it until you feel like you've gotten a lot of it off and you like the way it, it looks. And then you come back with a rag when it has dried a bit and you buff it and it will continue to take off a little bit more. But ceruzing wax is fabulous and it's especially beautiful with grays and blues and those kind of colors and it will just give that gorgeous lightness to a color. So that's one idea. The second one I did was I took my mica powder. And this one is called Soleil and I mixed it with Mind Your Own Beeswax and did the same thing, brushed it on, let it come to tack, and then buffed it. And this shows how you can get a totally different look with a metallic. And finally, this, I used the Windsor Gel Stain. Uh, not Windsor, English Walnut. English Walnut Gel Stain. And again, you brush it on and continue to brush, brush, brush. And then you take a rag, a lint-free clean rag, and you continue to dabble it and dabble it and dabble it until most of it comes off, but you don't want it to have a lot of texture to tell what tool you used. So I continue to really, really feather it and try and get it as kind of feathered and quietly textured as possible. And then you wax, light wax, dark wax, and that's what you get. So this is how I, you can use this paint. And you don't, I mean, many, many, all of these paints, you do not have to use straight out of the can. It's once you add different finishes to them is when you're going to get your desired effect. Okay, so here, let me show you what it is. Straight out of the can with some gold gilding, some light dark wax, and that's all the dust of ages. All that pretty grade is dust of ages. But another reason why I love this color is because I use it as my bool under my gilding. Let me show you how to do that. So even if you're not a red fan, this should be in your library because you will be using it. Okay. I went back to my mirror that I painted with milk paint and I decided I wanted to gild the edges. So what I have done is you first get your clean slate. Super important because this mirror had been completed, it had been waxed, it had been dusted. And to go back to do gilding, you've got to clean the edges with your clean slate. So wherever you're going to apply your paint and your gilding, make sure you do this. So you just add it to a rag and you carefully go in and clean off the areas. Wipe it down, make sure it's gotten all the dust, all the wax is off. Okay, then I took my paint 
and an artist brush. And I just went along and painted where I want my guild to be. Now, if you feel more comfortable, you can always tape out a little bit, but honestly, with a small brush, and this has such a nice little border on it, I didn't feel that I needed to. So let me just show you, I'm gonna paint a little. Just load up your brush, offload. And just start to paint. It actually doesn't have to be perfection as far as the line because here we are going to gild over and we're going to come back with some four aught steel wool and we are going to rub back some of that to antique it. So just go along and paint where you want it. And then we will come back. We'll let this dry, but I will demonstrate on the dry how to do your gilding size and add your gold leaf. Okay, let's just get this. Done a bit. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for now and move on to the side. So when you're doing your gilding size, again, you just want a small artist brush. And here is a Maker Studio gilding size. It is a glue that is a little bit watery, pure white, it'll go on white. And as it dries, it will become shiny and clear. So I'm gonna go back over where I have already painted, this is dry, this is the wet area, I'm just gonna to stick to this area and just add it. Cover all the red. Do not put it where you don't want it, so don't go beyond the red, don't get it in here because this will dry down and become very tacky and your size will adhere to it really nicely. Okay, I think I'll stop here just so I don't run into anything wet. Okay, you can see, try and get the pools out, but you can see it's white. You have about max, I would say 45 minutes of time to use this. So if I were to do this whole row, I probably would start with one side, paint it, paint the whole thing, let all that dry, take my gilding size and just do this much because then you go back and do all of your gold gilt. So don't put the gilding size on more areas than you're able to do in 45 minutes. Okay, so give yourself some time. Okay, so now I'm going to take the blow dryer and I'm gonna let this dry so that I can show you how to add the gilding. So start to see it's just turning clear, but staying shiny. If you rush the size, honestly, it will never dry underneath the gold gilt. So you never ever want to rush this step. Okay, I think that is nice and dry. Let's come back with our gold leaf. This is what it looks like. This is obviously not a real gold. It would cost a fortune if it were. but it is a wonderful product that ages and goes on really easily. Well, I, can't, I shouldn't say easily. I've had a little bit of practice, but it, once you kind of get used to it, it's really not that difficult. So with this, you fold back, but leave enough that you can hold the piece of leaf under these fingers, and then you've got it here. 
This will not tarnish, so I, I do kind of put my fingers on this gold. If you're using the sterling, do not put your fingers on it. That will tarnish, and you will get fingerprints. Okay, so here we go. Give it a good burnish. There you have it. Let's move on to the next. Hold it down. The stuff can fly away easily, so be patient. Lay it down. Burnish. There you go. Now, as you've noticed, I have cut the book because the pages are about this size. And when you're working on small, narrow areas like that, with the binding on one end, I've done it the other way and it was a mess. Make sure you have the binding on one end. You can always cut to the desired size that you would like. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm going to take a clean brush. I'm just gonna use a little chip brush and I'm going to kind of pounce and brush and this will remove the excess of your leaf. Do you see that? Now you can still see a little bit of the bool coming through. If you feel like you need to get in there with another piece, I just take my little scraps and go ahead and pounce that in. That will continue to stick where there is size. So go ahead and pounce those in. You don't have to do that, but sometimes it's nice to get everywhere and then let the antiquing process take off the excess. Okay, that kind of helped just add, fill in a little tiny bit. Okay. Now it's ready to antique. So this is how we antique this gold. Let me get this out of the way. What you do is you take your four aught steel wool and you gently go over everywhere on your gilt. Now this will start to show the red. If you burnish harder, you can get all the way down into some of the whiter areas. But this will also take down the sheen, which is great. Because if you want this to look old, you don't want quite that much sheen on it. all the way down here. Okay. We're going to continue to take off some of this sheen once we add some waxes. 
and our dust of ages. So let me brush this off. Your still wool, steel wool will definitely kind of crumble in there and you'll have a lot of kind of debris from that. So make sure you get all that off before you start to wax. Okay, let me hold this up. Let me show you what that looks like. Hopefully you can see that well. Okay, but look at that gorgeous border and see how it's so pretty just to have that little bit of that bool popping through. Okay. Next, we are ready for our light antiquing wax. Let me move some of my supplies out of the way, get to my brushes. Okay, here's my light wax. Load up with my puck. Always have a piece of cardboard so you can offload. You always wanna offload. Just make sure it's nice and evenly distributed on your brush without clumps. And then you lightly Go over your areas. You don't have to press too hard. Kind of pounce a little bit to get in there. Since there's so much carving. Okay. Yeah, there is plenty on there. Okay, I just want to get kind of around it where I took off some wax so that we could do this process so I can re-wax some of this areas, these areas in here. Okay, must let this dry. This is, you want it to come to tack, it will take about 20 minutes. We can hurry that along a little bit with just kind of fanning it. As I have mentioned before, if you have been following me at all, when you are waxing, you want to make sure you always, always, always do your light wax first. Let it come to tack. And then you move on to your dark wax. And while we're waiting for this to dry, now would be a great time for you guys to come on and say hi. We would love to hear where you're from. And if you will share this video with three friends, tag three friends, and you will name, your name will go into a drawing and you will get your own one step, frankly, Scarlet, so that you can either paint a piece of furniture or you can create some boule with it, whatever your little heart desires. But put your name in, say hi, tag three friends. We would love to hear from you. Okay, let's see. This is feeling pretty good. Let's go back with some dark wax. Get your dark wax brush. Get your dark wax. I'm just gonna show you Amy Howard's light and dark. Kind of load up and then always offload. And you lightly go back Starting with the edges. This will create that beautiful aged color. Just kind of lightly brush it everywhere. it a bit if you want but these are all very light strokes very very 
conservative when you're using this. You could always go back and add more, but too much really is not pretty. Just kind of butterfly kisses across the surface. Okay, let me show you what that looks like. Makes such a difference. Hopefully you can see that well enough. Isn't that pretty? Look at compared to before you age it at all and just having the color itself. It just takes a few steps, but it every step counts. Okay, now we're gonna do one final step. This is always my favorite. This is the Dust of Ages. This will give it even a more authentic aged look. It will get that grimy, dusty look into the crevices. So just pounce. Get it in there, don't be afraid. And you're going to take your lint-free rag. And you are going to hit and drag. buff this. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. So pretty. Look at no sanding, nothing difficult, and it just creates this gorgeous old world finish. I hope you really can see that well. It's so beautiful. Okay. So not only do you want this red, frankly scarlet, in your library for furniture, but this is exactly why I use it. Because I love to gild and I love to have just that traditional fool look peeking through. It's gorgeous. So thank you for watching again this Thursday. We'll see you next Thursday. But don't forget to tag three friends, share the video, and hopefully you will be the winner of the one-step paint. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.